Hey there gamers, Drew Casca here, and today we're talking about the very brutal week that Xbox has just had, because even just the last 72 hours has been uh, pretty much the worst Xbox has ever experienced, from getting review bombed of their new game, launching stuff completely broken, winning no awards, just across the board, I want to break this week down, because we've been discussing on the channel for the last year or so, the death of Xbox, where it's very obvious that Microsoft gaming will continue to exist in some form, but the current idea of Xbox, where you get a physical console and just subscribe to Game Pass, I think it's pretty obvious that that stuff is about to implode. But let's talk. Hi, hope you're having a great day, and if you could, please give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Real quick before anything else, check it out. I just got my PlayStation 5 PS1 themed controller. Oh my god, it looks so much better in real life than I ever could have imagined. But okay, video game time. So I saw a bunch of people talking about the fact that we're gonna have to go through multiple headlines here. But let's start with the fact that apparently Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 came out this week. And I can't believe I have to put that in quotes. The game is unplayable. It's busted. It's completely busted. I love this headline here where they said Flight Simulator struggles to take off. It's actually already being put into the overwhelmingly negative. Oh my God. Reviews collapse. Dev admits it completely underestimated the excitement for the game. But wait, that's not all. The bad news continues. Now, some people are saying that Stalker 2 is in a good state. Some people are saying it's almost unplayable. But we do know for a fact that people are playing it. Stalker 2 is selling very well. But I I've seen a lot of people incredibly upset that the game just itself is filled with tons of glitches from reflections not working, lighting not working, just monsters spawning directly on top of you and being invincible, dead bodies T-posing. People are buying Stalker, but... We're going to loop back on the buying of Stalker 2 because uh, I think this is part of a grander point that I want to hit here. But here's the other thing I've seen a lot of people discussing, which is that right now we have the nominees for the Game Awards, obviously coming up, and nothing Xbox related has pretty much any nominations. I think Hellblade 2 got most interesting narrative, but it's very obvious it's not going to win that. Well, last night, the Golden Joystick Awards happened, and literally every single thing that won, every single thing that won is either a PlayStation 5 exclusive or is a PlayStation 5 game. Best Studio went to Team Asobi for Astro Bot. I think it was a Best Console Game went to Helldivers 2, Best Multiplayer Game, Best Soundtrack, Best Storytelling, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I mean... It's pretty obvious that uh, it was a clean sweep. Now, this is pure Xbox.com, and even they are having to phrase it as politely as possible. Xbox has a quiet night as Golden Joystick winners are revealed. But I think the other part of it that's been in my mind, I feel like I keep thinking about how they have tried to pivot with Game Pass. It's pretty obvious that Game Pass is in a very bad state. By Xbox's own financial reports, the idea of subscription-based models, it's not really probably blowing up the way they originally intended. I think that when they first brainstormed the idea of Game Pass, apparently internally, Phil Spencer thinks that Game Pass is the best idea ever. And on paper, it seems like it should have taken off. Instead of getting people to buy, you know, two or three $70 games every single year, you get people to pay $15 a month or $10 a month as it originally was, and you get 100 million people to do it. And so more people are enjoying more games, and it's more money for more developers. I mean, it makes sense on paper, but what ended up happening is because Xbox isn't making enough games, and a lot of their games honestly are launching broken, unfinished, like we're seeing this week with Stalker 2 pretty much being unplayable. A lot of reviewers have called it unplayable, and literally unplayable games like Flight Sim. I think it's starting to signal to people that Game Pass is definitely on the verge of total collapse. In fact, What's even interesting to me is when you see stuff like this, Xbox Game Pass games for November are confirmed, but you'll notice it says standard, standard, ultimate, PC, 
This multi-tiered system of Game Pass, I think, is part of what's causing confusion. I get a chance to talk to casual gamers a lot, or what I almost feel like are mid-tier gamers. People that buy stuff, that love stuff, that are plugged into new releases, but they're not, you know sitting there on Blue Sky or Twitter actually tracking every update and news article. And a lot of times they do not understand why there's multiple Xboxes, why there's Xbox as an app on PC. A lot of people just don't get that. Or if they do get that, it's because they only pay attention to one ecosystem, right? So I almost feel like the fact that Ultimate has not really taken off the way they wanted one of the main reasons they invented the highest tiers of Game Pass is because of the purchase of Call of Duty. This was a massive, massive acquisition, costing $69 billion for Microsoft. And it's pretty obvious that the whole idea was Microsoft saying, okay, we're going to write one big paycheck, one massive paycheck to you for Xbox, but you got to find a way to finally be profitable. Xbox has been burning billions of dollars now for years and years and years. And so this seemed like their big Hail Mary, their chance to basically say, okay, please subscribe to Game Pass because this year, Call of Duty Black Ops 6 did go directly into Game Pass, but only the highest tier of it, the most expensive price increased tier of it. And it seems like, honestly, it didn't shift things as much as people probably hoped on Team Green's side. It seems like there was a spending boost, so some people did probably go from basic tier of Game Pass to Game Pass Ultimate to make sure they had Call of Duty, but what ended up happening is nobody bought the game on Xbox. Nobody bought the game at all on Xbox, which means that every single person that bought it, I think a lot of the numbers I've seen, 85% of people only bought it on the PlayStation 5, which is good. I'm not going to say those sales are bad. In fact, that is still a lot of money that's going to Xbox. Now, keep in mind, when stuff sells on other systems, there's a 30% price cut. If Xbox puts games on PlayStation and they sell it for $100, Xbox gets $70 and $30 goes to PlayStation. So Sony is definitely happy about this because the extreme popularity of Black Ops 6 means they have extra billions of dollars now for their own development and own exclusives. There has been talks about the fact that it's now officially confirmed that From Software is currently in full-blown discussions about being purchased by Sony. That's officially declared. It's not a rumor. It is officially declared. And so I've seen a lot of people joking about the fact that, honestly, Sony just got so many billions and billions and billions of dollars off Game Pass with zero work, zero investment of their own. They're like, okay, now they're going to buy From Software using that Call of Duty money. I almost think that this is, again, a big signal to how Game Pass is just dying. Like, look at this. Going to this post here by Matt Piscatella, or I guess they call him Skeets here. Uh, his big skeet here is all about the sales of Black Ops 6. And he says, Black Ops 6 going to Game Pass did a few things in the U.S. It resulted in a subscription spending boost. It shifted the shares of sales to PlayStation, meaning that people bought it just predominantly on Sony, even more than they typically do. It did not appear to result in a massive cannibalization of sales, and it did not appear to provide a significant boost to Xbox Series hardware. So it seemed like, obviously, when they initially bought this, the hope was, okay, Everybody always says Xbox got no games. That's the constant thing everybody says. And I do feel like that is a very much a console killing narrative. It killed the PSP. It killed the PlayStation Vita. If you say this system got no games, then people are going to repeat that. It's a mantra. It becomes a methodology where people go, okay, well, I'm not going to buy it. I'm not going to invest in an ecosystem that doesn't have any games. And it sounds like even the purchasing of Black Ops 6 making it a console game in this era of putting it on Game Pass directly did not get people to go out and buy an Xbox. But I guess that's not a huge shock, but it is a surprise when you also include Stalker 2, when you include Flight Sim, when you include the fact that Indiana Jones is about to come out. Maybe we'll see these sales numbers reflected at the end of the year, but I have a strong inkling that, uh, I think Xbox is just going to be a pure flatline. I think they're going to just be dead all holiday. But 
maybe I'll be wrong, but here it is. So all the open questions regarding the impact of subscriptions are still pretty open. Whatever one believes currently, well, not sure the biggest tests is changing anyone's mind yet. So it seems like even from industry analysts, they're kind of saying, okay, Black Ops 6 is big. It's huge. So this is a post from today. Here's a post from 11 days ago. And he says, Call of Duty engagement following the release of Black Ops 6 can only be defined by the term bonkers. We've yet to see anything like it in our engagement tracking data. Call of Duty Black Ops 6, including subscriptions and content, are very well. More on this next Friday. There's been an ongoing debate about Game Pass and its impact on the sales, and it's never been settled because it depends. Sometimes it can help, especially through virality. Sometimes it hurts. After two weeks, my take on this is that it may not have helped, but it also didn't hurt. So my frame of mind is that if anything, I think it's beginning to show people that nobody cares about Game Pass. Maybe I'm wrong, but I'm 99% sure I am correct, which is that at this point, I think people enjoy buying games to some degree, right? I think there is sort of a, I don't know, uh, an effort of I have saved up. I want to purchase this. I want to own it forever, right? In fact, what did I, let's see here. I got literally right here next to me, right here next to me. I've got... Uh, my Christmas gifts, hopefully my friends don't see this, but I'm giving uh, my copy, or sorry, not my copy, I'm giving a copy of Octopath Traveler 2 to one of my friends, that's why it's factory sealed, and I just bought FF7 Rebirth for my best friend Nick, he already knows I'm giving it to him, so it's not a spoiler, but my point is the fact that I think people enjoy going out, buying a game, spending that money, playing it, having a physical disc of it, I do feel like Game Pass is a failure for like 15 different reasons from a lack of good release schedule to honestly having those huge droughts between the actually good games to the price increases of Game Pass. But I almost feel like the fact that we're seeing games sell, even Microsoft Studio Games selling instead of being successful on Game Pass, I think that this is the final death rattles of Xbox Game Pass. I think that to my eyes, we're going to start to see very soon Xbox try to find some sort of exit strategy. I think here in the next five years, I don't think there's going to be an Xbox and I don't think there's going to be a Game Pass. Microsoft gaming subscription service or something like EA Play where you get a 10-hour trial or by subscribing to the service you get their really old games and a discount or something like that like hey pay five dollars a month for Microsoft gaming and you get a 10% discount on all games and you can play all of our stuff from five years ago for free I think it's going to be something like that but the current state of Game Pass more and more the data seems to say to me at least that the experiment has failed. But what do you guys think? Does this seem like an abysmally bad week for Xbox to you, or is this all hyperbole? Tell me your thoughts in the comments down below, and if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and please keep dreaming. I have never actually worn this shirt in a long time. I'm going to show you this. So, um, I had a friend once who said that I have a slow, methodic voice. She said, you kind of sound like a cult leader. So I bought this shirt as a joke. And obviously, I am never going to wear this in public, but it says cult leader. And I think it's a very funny shirt. But at the same time, it's one of the scenes where I'm like, look, man, Texas has had some cults. You know, we had the Waco thing and all that. So I'm not going to wear this out and about. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.